is ticking and graduation is five weeks away, the Career Center at Columbia College Chicago has guidance on post-college life. Did you know that Columbia offers free STI testing? Our reporters have what you need to know. Are you eligible for a tax break? Our reporters have a guide on which college students may be able to receive the break. Were you able to attend the ASL department's ASL Jam event? We have a recap of the event for you coming up. Shop Columbia's March of Miniature Artwork Fit in Small Spaces. TV Newsbeat tells you more. Hello and happy Friday. Welcome back to Newsbeat. I'm Amari Flowers. And I'm Emma Hutchinson. Let's get into this week's top campus news. Graduation is right around the corner. To be exact, it's five weeks from now. Our student reporter, Jordan Lynn Ruiz, takes us to the Career Center for tips on how to land a job right after graduating. The Career Center, located on the third floor of the Student Center, has become a key resource for graduating seniors looking to land their first job in their respective fields. Well, the Career Center offers numerous services, so we have industry-specific advising. So I'm the advisor for cinema and television arts. We also have advisors for IAM, fine arts, photography and fashion, and basically all of our majors. So we can provide that industry insight, that specific insight, and we can also provide support for materials. So your resume, your cover letter. The Career Center is open to all students at Columbia, including alums up to a year after graduation. The Career Center also encourages students to visit, even if it's their last semester. Visit the Career Center. Um, we do see alums up to a year after graduation. It's much easier if we've already started a relationship and are able to advise you throughout your journey. The last semester of your senior year is not too late. The Career Center is set to host their Code Expo on April 9th, where students can interact with employers and organizations that recruit and mentor diverse talent. The Code Expo is open to all students regardless of year or major. For more information on upcoming events and workshops, make sure to check out the Handshake website. I'm student reporter Jordan Lurie for TV Newsbeat. I gotta mark my calendar for April 19th. I'm taking advantage of that. Me too. Internships, internships, internships. Yes. Free STI testing took place this Thursday at the Student Health Center. Let's check in with student reporter Connor Doerr for the story. This door is the Student Health Center at 916 South Wabash on the fifth floor, room 503, where every third Thursday of every month, they give free STI testing to students at Columbia College. We have an arrangement with Lurie Children's Hospital. They come in and they do testing, for STI testing. They test for um, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and HIV. Student health plan doesn't include testing like that. That would add considerable amount of money. Even though student health, uh, you would think that that would be one of the most important things. Now, if a student needs testing done at any other time, the Student Health Center can refer them to other STI testing that Lurie provides. Nurse practitioner Vonda Esme says the results could take three days to one week. It is quite a bit of lab work that needs to be done. They come and make an appointment with myself or one of my colleagues, and we will help them with whatever treatment they need. The health center also recommends preventive care like PrEP and HIV prevented medication. But STI testing isn't the only health care that they provide free to students. So we function as a urgent care type thing. We can help you with sore throats, with ear aches, with um, sprained ankles, um, urinary tract infections, things of that nature. Um, so. Our services here are free for students. The visits are free. Um, it's included in tuition. Um, any medications that might be needed, we do send those to a pharmacy. Students are responsible for that um, cost, but we work really hard to make sure that we get them the most cost-effective medication. Make sure to stay safe and get tested routinely every three months. This is just to make sure that you don't catch anything that you don't want. For TV Newsbeat, I'm Connor Doerr. Students, please take your health seriously and go get tested. It really is, it really is crucial for college students. 
Navigating taxes can be a daunting task. However, there's good news. The 1098T tax form can be a powerful tool in saving money for some students. Here is how you can make the most out of it. Reporter Julian Watson has the story. Educational institutions issue the 1098T form to summarize tuition payments and other related expenses made during the tax year. For students in Columbia, this means potential tax breaks on qualified educational expenses. I am very disappointed that this is something I did not know about since my freshman year, since especially my advisors and many of my professors have been fully aware that I have been working full time paying my paying bills since, since moving out of the dorm sophomore year. So even though this was information I had access to, this was not information I knew was available. And as a student, I'm, like I stated earlier, I'm a little disappointed that this was not mentioned or has not even been mentioned until after it was too late. So what expenses qualify for these tax breaks? These include tuition, fees, and other related expenses that are generally eligible. However, it's essential to keep accurate records and consult with a tax professional to maximize your savings. To receive your 1098-T form, simply navigate to Columbia's OASIS portal, go to My Finances, enter CCC Pay, and then view My 1098-T form. First off, apply for the, for the tax, apply, um, fill out that tax form, try to get as much as you can covered. But I guess my regret would be not asking more questions even though I didn't know that there were answers I was looking for. Students are eligible to receive thousands of dollars in tax credit, so be sure to file before the deadline of April 15th. Remember, understanding the ins and outs of tax benefits as a student can lead to substantial savings. Whether you're pursuing a degree in the arts, media, or any other field here at Columbia College Chicago, don't overlook the potential of the 1098-T tax form. Last week, a bill moved through the House of Representatives aiming to ban the popular video app TikTok in the United States. More coming up on Newsbeat. Shop Columbia's March of Miniature Artwork Fit in Small Spaces. TV Newsbeat tells you more. And after, want to know when Chicago will start feeling warmer temperatures? We have your seven-day forecast coming up after the break. those lives, many lovers, and in those lovers I felt happiness and sorrow. The same feelings as such the society fears to tread. Adventures beyond imagination. Wonders not of this world. I can recreate a long gone culture with a streak of an eye. Build lives around ancient worlds. Observe through someone else's eyes, their soul. I can see the history of a nation unfold before me and the turmoil and strife of a million people. I watch as a city builds a glorious monument to humanity and see as time withers it away. I am a time traveler, crossing centuries, discovering new ideas and equations. I can flow through the heart, the brain, and the intimate thoughts of each one. I have worked with my hands in fields spanning miles. I have saved lives, conjured demons, and rode on the shoulders of giants. I have held hands with God. I have sung with a chorus of a million. All of this by simply turning a page. Take you. Last week, it was a bill moved to the House of Representatives aiming to ban the popular video app TikTok in the United States. Reporter Brandon Eddy has the latest on the bill. The House's move to ban TikTok prompts concerns about its future. 
spurring discussion on what happens next for its users, especially if the Chinese owner refuses to sell. TikTok with over a billion users worldwide, has become a cultural phenomenon, enabling users to share talents, boost businesses, and fulfill entrepreneurial aspirations through its innovative features. From engaging dance challenges to humorous comedy sketches, TikTok's diverse content captivates audiences of all ages. If you would promote like music artists like me, like I am working on an EP, I think that it would be really great to gain traction through TikTok because the algorithm is super like tuned in for that. Promoting smaller like people, platforms, it's a great outlet to do that. There is considerable speculation surrounding TikTok's future plans. Regardless of the outcome of recent developments, some express apprehension about potential major changes, doubting their excitement and questioning whether such alterations mask the true intentions behind the app's potential ban. I think that because people are actually using their voices for like actual political issues or like worldly issues that they're very passionate about, the government's becoming intimidated. Like it's been no joke that people are like, oh yeah, like TikTok sells your data. Like that's been a, like not a like a joke, but also like, you know, like every single social media app sells data. There are growing concerns about where the attention is directed amidst the pressing real world issues of today. Many users argue that TikTok should not be the sole or overly emphasized focus of concern. It feels kind of um, not our priority, it shouldn't be at least. Um, I feel like there's major issues within America that can be discussed more so than our little app that connects us with people around the world. There haven't been any recent updates on the TikTok app, but the question still remains, what is the future of TikTok? I'm student reporter Brandon Eddy for Newsby Columbia College, Chicago. When's the last time that you watched TikTok? I actually watched it during um, my train ride here. Oh wow, then we would hate for it to get banned. Yes. And are you feeling anxious to start the warmer weathers coming? Are you anxious for the warmer weather to start? Well, we have your seven day forecast coming right now. This is the city right now. It was snowing this morning, surprisingly, and it is March, so that's a little odd. Let's look at the seven day forecast. Make sure you grab your coats today because throughout the day you'll experience some flurries. Saturday and Sunday it's a little cloudy, but it's okay. Sunday it's a little bit warmer. Tuesday, grab your coats again mm -hmm. and your hats and gloves. It's a little bit more snow. And don't worry, Thursday you see the sun, but again, you're going to need those coats and gloves. Yeah, it's not quite spring yet. And spring, the first day of spring just happened. Yep. I'm just so shocked. Should like, have been that. Well, Shop Columbia's March of Miniature Artwork, Fit in Small Spaces, TV Newsbeat tells you more. Have you heard about any of the contests going around campus? We have a guide on how to enroll coming up. And you want to know what is coming up on Newsbeat broadcast next week? Our executive producer, Olivia Cohen, is in the newsroom. those lives, many lovers, and in those lovers I felt happiness and sorrow. The same feelings as such the society fears to tread. Adventures beyond imagination. Wonders not of this world. I can recreate a long gone culture with a streak of an eye. Build lives around ancient worlds. Observe through someone else's eyes, their soul. I can see the history of a nation unfold before me and the turmoil and strife of a million people. I watch as their city builds a glorious monument to humanity and see as time withers it away. I am a time traveler, crossing centuries, discovering new ideas and equations. I can flow through the heart, the brain, mind and the intimate thoughts of each one. I have worked with my hands in fields spanning miles. I have saved lives, conjured demons, and rode on the shoulders of giants. I have held hands with God. I have sung the chorus of a million. All of this
this by simply turning a page. Where will imagination take you? Shop Columbia's popular March of Miniatures 2024 exhibition is here just in time for spring. Student reporter Robin Sluzes has the story. The annual March of Miniatures 2024 exhibit, open now and running through March 31st, is curated by Shop Columbia staff and are no larger than nine by nine by nine inches. You know, I think it, this exhibition came from at the students, that, workers that I had at the time and myself. We just love miniature things um, and we just love multiples. So I think it's a, a unique way to give artists a way to exhibit work in maybe a size that they don't normally produce work in. The annual Spotlight exhibition features work from current Columbia students, graduated alumni, faculty and staff, and includes college merchandise and more. Um, okay, so please and mine. Um, I submitted, I think, seven different um, pictures of mine. They're from all over Chicago. Um, they're all um, 35 millimeter color film. Uh, yeah. Shop Columbia also functions as a learning lab that teaches artists about the logistics of sales, restocking items, or if selling their work is even in their future. Go buy something at Columbia Cause, Cause Shop. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Shop Columbia is an amazing place for illustrators and creators and artists and crocheters. It is a beautiful place. I think you should buy some. Artists can submit their work year-round at shop.column.edu by clicking the Submit Your Work link located at the lower left of the homepage. For purchasers, Shop Columbia hours are Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Fridays by appointment. The deadline for manifest submissions was March 10th. So be sure to check out Manifest 2024 merchandise that will be on sale soon. I'm Robin Sluzas, student reporter for Columbia's TV Newsbeat. Everything is so cute in there. Yes, I hope they have like a little miniature purse filled with money for me. Oh, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last week, ASL Club hosted their ASL Jam event on Friday. Student reporter Charles Ron has a story for Newsbeat. Just this past Friday, ASL Club hosted their fifth ASL Jam, titled Space Jam, at the Haas at the 623 South Wabash. At Space Jam, students performed an assortment of acts, including skits, music interpretations, stories, and more. Following the kickoff of the event done by the host, the first student took to the stage. My performance was a story. It was kind of related to our theme of outer space. Um, it was also kind of just a beautiful depiction of spring and it had a lot of, you know, scenery and there was a tree and a flower and it was all very cute until the very end when my characters got abducted by aliens. When it comes to performing, getting inspiration for your act can sometimes be hard. Rachel talks about the two things that helped inspire her story. I would say that I felt in inspired by nature and, you know, I went on a walk around my neighborhood and saw some beautiful sights, so that was an inspiration, but also I wanted to work a little in outer space in there, so that's where the aliens came in, naturally. The people on stage weren't the only ones having fun, though, as there were tons of people in the audience just having a blast, watching and supporting their friends, peers, and family members. Because I really wanted to support my friends and my boyfriend and they, you know, they were there to perform that night. So I really just wanted to be there and watch and enjoy myself. Also, I wanted to go because I love watching all my friends perform and, you know, I get a lot of pleasure out of that watching my friends perform. So that's why I wanted to go. As anybody knows, performing can be scary, whether it's your first time, there's a large crowd or any other factor. It can be hard to overcome those fears, but there's always the next time. I did not perform at ASL Jam. The reason I didn't perform was because I, 
I'm, you know, scared and I'm nervous. There were a lot of people in the audience and I was going to be up there all alone on stage with all these eyes on me and it was, it would have made me feel way too anxious and nervous. So I did not perform, but my senior year, I'm hoping to get up there and perform for jam. We'll see. For those interested in attending the next ASL Jam and or other ASL Club events, make sure to check the Engage app to keep yourself updated. For Newsbeat, I'm student reporter Charles Ron. Wow, that looked really fun. I would love to go next time. Can I go with? Do you know ASL? Unfortunately not. That's okay, I'll still take you. Oh, thanks. So awesome. <laughs> Very nice. Are you interested in enrolling in any of the contests around campus? We have a guide on how you can sign up. And are you wondering what Newsbeat is working on for next week's broadcast? Executive producer Olivia Cohen is in the newsroom with an update. That and more coming up. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there. Junk food. You see that truck? Oh, geez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Oh, hey there. <laughs> How we doing? So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Really? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little bruised? The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time. Are you interested in applying for one of the three commencement competitions? This may be your chance to shine at commencement, which will be on May 11th and 12th. The college is offering your competitions, including four competitions, including giving the student address and photography and poetry competitions. Applications to be a student speaker close tonight, March 22nd at 1159 p.m. Applications for the poetry and photography competition will both close on Monday, April 1st. Winners of the photography and poetry competition will also have a chance to win $1,000. For more information on these exciting competitions, including application details, visit students.colum.edu slash commencements slash competitions. Wow. Are you planning on entering in any? No, unfortunately not. I might do the photography one. Really? Yes. I cannot speak in front of anybody, no. Uh, even though the college will be going on spring break in just a few hours, Newsbeat will still be working on the following show. Our executive producer, Olivia Cohen, is live in the newsroom to discuss what is coming up on Newsbeat. Next week on Newsbeat, our reporters will be diving into the recent delays students have faced while filling out the FAFSA financial aid document. This comes as the college is looking at laying off some of the staff to help curb the looming $38 million deficit. Students Affairs is one of the administrative departments that could see employee cuts. We will have this and more next week on Newsbeat. Back to you. Wow, I can't wait for next week. I'm going to be doing a fun story. How about you? I hope I'm tanned by next week. Oh, ready for this, yes, you next are. Next week's newscast. 
Spring break officially starts in a few hours for many of us. While some students are getting ready to travel, some are staying local. Take a listen. Just spending time with family, um, catching up on work and stuff. I have a lot of videos to edit, so. I'm editing a D&D session for my sister that was filmed back in like January. I have yet had time to put it together and stuff. I'm in a dance group, so I will be uh, practicing dances and uh, just play video games because I have the just exams and homework just didn't give me enough time. <laughs> I'm mostly just try to catch up on my late assignments, upcoming assignments, work, and just rest. Uh, I plan to hang out with some friends, and yeah, because I haven't hung out with them in a minute. Uh, we usually go out to eat, and then we do an activity or two, like go watch a movie, bowling. Um, I'm going to spend time with my grandma and her dog. Um, she lives in the south side, and she had knee surgery, so she can't really walk her dog as much as she wants. She has like a, a, a little Yorkie. So I'm going to be helping her with her dog and just spending time with her. She's really sweet when she wants to be. So, <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. For spring break, I'm staying here in Chicago. I'm in like Wicker Park area, so I'll be, you know, frequenting there. And then I'm going to be mainly working in post-production for a movie I just directed here for a fictional cinema. Um, we're going to try to get a rough cut and then a fine cut, you know, ready for manifest. And we're going to work on sound mixing and coloring and sort of just wrapping up the finishing touches and you know, get it out so people can see it, hopefully. You know, that's the goal. Emma, do you have any fun, exciting plans for spring break? Uh, not at all, actually. I'm working 40 plus hours. Ooh, I'm sorry. I'll be in Florida next week. Oh, that's not very nice. Well, I'm Emma Hutchinson from Newsbeat. And I'm Amari Flowers. Have See you a, next time. Have a great weekend. <laughs>